YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I get asked so much, oh, I'm coming to Milan, what is there to do? What can I see? Where should I go? And I never have like, you know, a complete thought out list. I know that Milan has this reputation for being very I know that Milan has this reputation for being very gray and drab, but like I've said in previous videos, that's not necessarily true, and there's tons of things to do here. The first thing that you can do in Milan is of course shopping. I'll just get the obvious one out of the way first. Milan is the city to come to for shopping, and where you go shopping, via Torino, um, Corso Vittorio Emanuele, or Corso Buenos Aires. Those are the three big places that people that are from Milan actually go to shop. My favorite one is Corso Vittorio Emanuele because all the stores on that street are super big. Like the Zara has something like four floors, the Mango has two floors, and the basement is huge. Um, there's Renascimento. Is it Renascente? Yeah, Renascente, the big Italian um, department store where they sell um, a lot of designer names actually, is also on this street. I mean, I think there's one on Via Torino as well, but the one on Rena, the one on Corso Vittorio Emanuele is huge. And on the top, there's this cafe that anybody can go to eat at. I mean, it's not too expensive, but it's still expensive because it is right next to Duomo. But if you get like a drink or something there, you can see on the that top floor the duomo right next to you like the top of the duomo you can see the whole piazza from high up it's really beautiful i put it in one of my vlogs before in addition to shopping and fashion i do have to th um, mention that, that that we have milan fashion week you don't have that in any other city except for paris london and new york but anyways fall winter fashion week is in february and um spring summer is in September. Everybody thinks that Fashion Week is like this super exclusive, super secretive thing, but it actually doesn't have to be. Everybody can come to Fashion Week. There are multiple events that are public. For example, Vogue Fashion Night Out, they have that, I think, the first night of Fashion Week every year where all the stores are open until super late and they give out drinks and free to pair, like hors d'oeuvres that you can come and eat and you just have a good time out with your friends. Some fashion shows, if you wait outside of them, will let you in after everybody else is seated and they still have space because they want to pack the room. Or there are people that like just stand out to see the celebrities because a lot of celebrities come for Milan Fashion Week, of course. It, even if you don't work in the fashion industry or you're not some top blogger, you can still come to Fashion Week and have fun doing it. So I would say to come to Milan during Fashion Week if you're into it because you can definitely participate. I love the nightlife in Milan. There's always something to do, whether you want to get an aperitivo or you want to go to the club. But some of my favorite discotecas would have to be old fashioned on Sunday nights when they have hip hop nights. I also like on Richmond. It's pretty upscale and it's on the yellow line so in Rio I've been there a couple times and if you follow me on Instagram you've seen my posts about them. Hollywood also has a very like nice hip-hop night that's right next to Piazza Gaia Lenti so that really cool futuristic piazza I've showed you guys in like a million different vlogs yeah Hollywood is right there and they have a really good hip-hop night I think it's Thursdays. In terms of aperitivo places I like to go to Iguana which is on um it's kind of on Via Torino, it's on a little street off of Via Torino, near Colonne, or um, Maya on Navigli. Since we're talking about aperitivo places, I might as well tell you guys about some restaurants to eat at. To be honest, I'm not completely familiar with like five-star Italian restaurants that you can come eat at if you want to eat in Milan. They're there everywhere i just can't afford them oh and this one is for italians if you're coming to milan um from another part of italy there's a really awesome american uh restaurant it's called cory soul chicken the owner is a friend of a friend and kind of like my friend too i eat there all the time and he's from kentucky and he specializes in like southern cooking especially fried chicken and he uses all italian ingredients so it's super high quality and even feels really healthy and it's pretty cheap i mean i'd say it's like 11 euros per person i eat there all the time with my friends it's amazing when i hear italians say that they eat fried chicken from chicken and chicken and the kfc and arese i'm like what are you doing of all you know of fried chicken is chicken and chicken you need to reevaluate your life and go see Corey's. if you're an american i mean don't come to italy to eat american food I mean, unless you want to you can but that was a special um 
suggestion for the Italians out there. This isn't really a restaurant, but I recently discovered this place the other day. If you follow me on Snapchat, you have seen me. It's a hookah bar near um, Corso Buenos Aires. Did it? Oh my gosh, me and Enrico had so much fun. It was, I think, uh, 20 euros for a drink and um, the hookah thingy. And yeah, it was fun and I felt cool. And the music was cool. And the people and the atmosphere was cool. I almost forgot La Scala. You can go to La Scala and see like a traditional Italian opera if you want. I think they also do new shows too. I'm not sure. You'd have to like check what shows are playing right now. But La Scala is an opera theater and you can get tickets and there's right one right there in Milan. It's super famous and people are always going. They have discounts for students and senior citizens usually. So I definitely, I definitely suggest that you guys check out La Scala. Things to see, things to like take pictures of, you know. Of course, you have Duomo and Galleria in uh, Piazza Duomo. But if you walk a little bit further, you'll also find Colonne di San Lorenzo. And if you walk a little bit more further, you'll end up in 24, Piazza 24 Maggio, where there's also La Darsena. And also, if you walk a little bit more, there are Navigli. I Navigli is amazing for nightlife. I mean, it's literally like these two or three long streets of restaurants and shops and at nighttime you can get an aperitivo anywhere like Navili is the aperitivo spot in Milan so if you want to get something to eat for not very expensive the aperitivos are usually from 10 to 15 euros you can get one on Navili and they also have like actual Italian restaurants if you want to have like a pizza or pasta or something a bit more traditional. A place that, I mean, there's not, it's not like there's that much to do there, it's more to see, but Piazza Gaia Lenti, you guys know that's my spot, I'm always there, I love the way it looks. That is also, um, an, uh, you have Corso Como right next to Piazza Gaia Lenti, which is like this super posh street where, you know, all the rich people hang out, they have a lot of designers stores next to it and you can do aperitivo there it's a uh, way more classy atmosphere and a lot less crowded than Navili might be Navili is always super crowded so be warned and then next to it there's Piazza Gaia Lenti which is that huge piazza with all the glass buildings and the Unicredit Tower which is really cool to look at and they have stores in there too like Sephora and Nike if you want to go shopping some other historical sites that you might want to see the Arco della Pace Sportsesco Castle, like the Il Castello, is open to the public to see. You don't have to pay anything to go inside, and um, yeah, you can walk around and see the castles that the castle that the Sports has lived in. And right next to the castle is Parco Sempione, which is this huge, beautiful park where my friends came to visit me two springs ago. We went there and they loved it. it if you come in the spring, you have to go to Parco Sempione. Look over, and you have on one side the castle, and on one side Parco. Um, Larco della Pace and it's really awesome. Kind of in between Castello and Gaia Olenti you have the Brera district which is like the super artsy kind of alternative area that's another great place to do aperitivos. I am not really a museum goer to be honest. I'm not really into visual arts. I'm more into like performing arts, watching shows and stuff. I, I know about the artists. I know Baroque. I know like the different the romanticism movements and you know the renaissance and all that stuff. I know it. I get it. It's cool but I mean I mean if I had to choose between going to a museum and doing something else I'd probably choose doing something else. So I don't have a long list of museums to say, hey guys, check out because I've been there because I actually in two years of living in Milan have never been to a museum here. I know it's crazy. Go ahead, go off in the comments. But I do know that they have this really cool modern art museum next to Duomo. Um, I think it's called Novecento. They have the, the Last Supper. You can go see the Last Supper, Da Vinci's Last Supper. But Milan has a lot of like modern art. Um, if you go to the Triennale, which is inside Parco Sempione, another great aperitivo place. And you guys can have amazing aperitivos just like, just about anywhere in Milan. But anyways, the actual Triennale is, I think, an exposition center, and they always have like shows and, um, 
things going on there regarding like visual arts. But yeah, that's basically my tourist guide to Milan, all the places that I would suggest you hit up and all the things that I think you could do and have fun here. Definitely if you're coming for a weekend or something, I mean, you wouldn't be able to do all of this in a weekend, I don't think. If you want to come to Milan, I would say the best times to come are either Fashion Week, Christmas, or Easter, like spring. Any holiday is fine because most people work in Milan and don't live in Milan, so for the holidays, there's a huge exodus and everybody leaves to go to their families. September and April have the lowest prices in tickets. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I hope that the next time you come to Milan, you don't feel restricted to just Duomo and Galleria because while they are beautiful pieces of like works of art, they are magnificent and I love looking at them and being able to see them every day living in Milan. They're not all that Milan has to offer. If you guys know of any places or sites that I missed in this video, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And nothing, enjoy your next trip to Milan. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you guys in my next one. Mwah.